I would like to thank ANSWER members for the invitation to share my testimonial. And a special thanks to Diderik for the warm invitation and the way that uh, he did it. Thank you so much. It's been, it's been a pleasure to listen to all of you. So I believe that the title of my presentation talks about itself. I am a Brazilian geographer in exile. And my exile, of course, was the last step Maybe not the last, but for me, it was the last step of, um, of a period in my life. Uh, a long journey dealing with different types of uh, threats, which started uh, with uh, attempts to disqualify my research until threats against my life. So I believe that to explain why my research became a problem, it's better if I tell you a bit about my work. Um, so, geography of asymmetries. Why this expression? Why does it come from? Uh, I have two maps that I think uh, show really clearly what uh, asymmetries uh, mean. Here is the cover of my atlas, my first atlas. And it's uh, available online. It's in the. It is his. It's English version. In the beginning, it was published in Portuguese, but then translated to English. It's available in this link. You can download it if you want. But to talk about uh, um, asymmetry, I would like to show you this map. This is an anamorphosis, uh, which is a technical choice to map some phenomenon in which the countries are proportionally deformed according to their importance in relation to the topic it's representing. So here is the case of pesticides exportation. As, uh, as you can see, of course, China highlights, uh, is, it stands out in this map because uh, Camp China bought Syngenta a couple of years ago, but of course, uh, European countries, they are, uh, they are controlling more than one third of the total sales. But when we look at the who most consumes uh, pesticides, we can clearly see the South America, especially, Brazil and Argentina. And uh, of course, uh, it uh, brings a, a severe impact. Here we have a map about people poisoned by pesticides in Brazil. Uh, as you can see, in Brazil in the last years, more than 50,000 people have been poisoned by pesticides. However, if we consider that for each case reported, we have a 50 unreported. It means that probably we had more than 2 million people poisoned by pesticides in the country in the last year. So, and as if it was not enough, I believe that it's important to say that about 18% of people poisoned in Brazil are children and teenagers between 0 and 19 years old. Even children between zero and 14 years old. Here we have a map about children in their first and second childhood that were poisoned by pesticide. And as you can see, 3,600 children were poisoned in this period. I'm talking about official data, but uh, it means that probably almost 200,000 children were poisoned by pesticides in this period. And even babies, even babies, when, when I say babies, I really mean babies between 0 and 12 months old. More than 500 babies were poisoned by pesticides. So maybe we had in this period more than 27,000 babies poisoned by pesticides. That's why I'm insisting that we are no longer, when we are talking about agriculture, we are no longer talking about food. It's different. Uh, back into the, to, to my point. 
even babies have been intoxicated and even before they were born. Look, here we have a map about pregnant women poisoned by pesticides. Almost 300 women were poisoned in the last years, according to the official data, but maybe we had more than 14,000 women, pregnant women poisoned. And I believe that you, better than me and better than anyone here, you in this room, you know what it means in terms of health impact for the women and also for the children. So there is an infant side going on in the world, but especially in the global south. That's why uh, we can talk about chemical colonialism, because the companies that are headquartered here are selling products already banned in Europe to countries like Brazil. And they are doing also a huge lobby to weaken the legislation abroad in Brazil. I have proofs of this. So, and there is not just difference in terms of pesticides allowed here and there. Just to, to give you an example how serious it is, 50% of the 10 pesticides, I mean, f um, if you look at the top 10 pesticides sold in Brazil, five are pesticides not allowed in the European Union. So this is also an uh, asymmetry, but uh, it's not about not just about the types of the substance, but it's also about the residues. Look at the asymmetry here. Here we have the example of uh, carbaril, this insecticide. We allow 200 times higher carbaril in our apple, for example, than you allow. This is one example of many, many, many others. I could, do, I could give you hundreds of examples of this asymmetry. That's why we also, uh, we can also talk about molecular colonialism because it's in fact, it's in our body. It's in, in the women body. There are children, babies, girls with uh, two years old in the uh, Northeast area in Brazil that have developed breast and hair puppy two years old babies because of pesticides exposure. So this is an infant side. That's what's going on. And here maybe is the most emblematic example of this asymmetry. We allow in our drinking water 5,000 higher uh, residue of glyphosate than uh, European Union allows. So this is a colonial practice where people from the global south worth less than the global north. Otherwise, we would already had the same framework for the whole world. Uh, but somehow, as you know, there is a circle of poisoning because the pesticides are, back in, are coming back to Europe through the food that comes from there. Here, I, I, I brought two examples. Uh, to show you. Here we have a map showing the Mercosur exportations to the, the European Union and about, if you look at the case of Brazil, about 70% of the samples uh, had residues with the pesticides above the average allowed here or pesticides that are not allowed here, those ones with the red circles. And here, finally, um, talking about circle of poisoning, the case of Belgium, the country where I am currently living. Between, uh, between uh, 2013 and 2020, Belgium exported pesticides not authorized in the European Union to more than 70 countries. And the total quantity of these unauthorized pesticides exported by Belgium in this period was uh, 47,000 tons. However, between 2017 and 2019, Belgium detected the presence of pesticide residues in food from dif 13 different countries, as you can see in this map, all of these countries. And among the substances banned in the European Union detected in the Belgium monitoring, the following stand out. Acephate, bifentrin, carbofuran, carbendazine, chlorpyrifos, etc., etc. 
So this is what we can call as circle of poisoning. So, and uh, why I am in exile, I think you already have an idea uh, about why, but so after I have launched my atlas with uh, some of this information, I started to suffer different kinds of uh, intimidations and threats. I believe that why I was discussing the impact of pesticides in Brazil to the Brazilian public and my atlas was in Portuguese, it was um, more or less acceptable, but uh, I mean, I, I gave uncountable interviews. I talked uh, in public audiences in Brazil, in Chamber of the Putes, in the capital of the country, in different states in Brazil, etc., showing all of these impacts, showing cases of uh, malformation, increasing in the areas where we most use pesticides, etc., but is still uh, acceptable. But once I launched the Atlas in Europe in its English version, then the threats started. I remember that when I came to Glasgow to launch the Atlas, I launched in, in, in Atlas and Berlin with the answer support. And Brian Winnet, uh, asked me if I thought that there was a risk to me on dealing with this subject, and I said no. No, I, I think there is no risk because I, my research is based on public and official data. And uh, three days later, a French uh, journalist who was interviewing me made the same question. And I gave him the same answer. No, no, I think it's, I'm, uh, it's okay because I'm dealing with the official data. But that night was the first night that I lost sleep. I had an insomnia because, uh, because of this. In this night, I realized that I was being naive. I thought, oh my God, I am here in Scotland. My children are in Brazil. And then, and then uh, it was the first night among many, many others because, in fact, when I w once I went back to Brazil, the intimidations uh, and threats started. Uh, and the owner of the biggest organic shop in, in Scandinavia decided to boycott the Brazilian products. And this, and this decision was spread in the Brazilian uh, media. And he said to me that his decision was based on the content of my atlas. So, and then uh, the first threats were uh, first to attempt to disqualify my research. So. Uh, the agribusiness launched uh, um, a platform, a website called uh, AgroSabe, Agro Knowledge, and the subtitle is The Worst Plug is Misinformation. And then they publish uh, about my atlas, Atlas of Pesticides Presents Incorrect Data. And then you can see in this uh, ellipse, the green ellipse, uh, same fake news, which means without fake news. Uh, which uh, it's like I am, I was doing fake news with my research. Look, uh, in this uh, website, what is AgroSaber? AgroSaber is a platform to clarify in a simple and accessible way different topics related to food production and so on. And then about my atlas, atlas of pesticides presents incorrect data. Uh, so, this is one example among others. This is another one, Chico Graziano, which is a, a, a person, he is, he's not exactly a professor, but he teaches in, a, he, gives, he gives classes in a more or less prestigious institution. He's totally related to agribusiness in Brazil, and he said this. Uh, uh, USP, uh, USP is University of Sao Paulo Geography, tries to assassinate modern agronomy in Brazil. It uses the controversial agrotoxin as a weapon and Atlas commands this tragic operation. So, and so on. And here also, uh, um, one Larissa Bombard invented another lie and uh, here when I left the, uh, when I left the country, a USP professor was reprimanded for not fulfilling her pedagogical and scientific obligations when I left the country. 
vagrancy. I don't know if in English it has the same meaning than in Portuguese, but in Portuguese this word is also to describe uh, prostitution, you know? So he was misogynous also. But this, this was the really tip tip of the iceberg. It was not, in my case, it was, ah, and this person was expected to be the environment minister in the Bolsonaro government. This is the person who did this, uh, yes, this stuff, if I say. In my case is not a, an isolated case. There were other uh, researchers that, um, suffered some kinds of uh, intimidations, not like me. They were uh, intimidated by their own institution. That's why we launched a network. It's called IRERE. IRERE is a bird in Brazil that um, uh, alerts other birds when there is a risk, uh, as you. So, and uh, yes, it was launched in 2020. Uh, yes, so this is this just the tip of the iceberg, uh, which involved uh, in the end, uh, the, um, I was threatened, my house was assaulted, and the assault probably was related to my research. I received an email saying, uh, the person who sent me an email he said that I am a um, pilot of uh, agriculture aircraft, you know, because in Brazil it's allowed to spread pesticides by plane. And uh, after I gave an interview on, on TV journal, and he said, uh, if the professor thinks and is still saying, continue to say that uh, aerial spraying is not safe, I would like to invite you to come with me in my plane to see how safe it is, you know, in a totally ambiguous way. So this is one example. And just to finish it, there is a painting made by a friend of mine. She just, I think she got the, I think the most difficult um, moment in my life. It, it was, we left the country with just three suitcases and our backpacks. And it was crazy because I haven't uh, described uh, her uh, how was, but she kept, you know, as a friend, she was, um, how can I say, enough uh, touched to to understand. So I'm really glad to to for being here and to share my testimonial with you and to learn with you also. Thank you so much.